Hey guys, Mystery Wheel Gunner back with you again. Thanks for tuning in. And today we're going to have the Hearing Protection Show. Sometimes we call Hearing Protection Ear Pro for short. Today we're going to be looking at some of the basic ones. There are some really nice highfalutin electronic ones. We'll save those for another show. Today we're going to focus on the basic ones. Um, now, just because they're basic, doesn't mean they don't do the job. These basic ones work very, very well. They're widely available and very affordable. There's basically two different types. You have the ear muffs, which go around your, you know, go around your ear. And then you have the ear plugs, the plug style, which go in your ear. Now, no matter which style you prefer, there's going to be one thing they have in common, and that is the NRR the noise reduction rating. When you look at these products, look for that somewhere on the label. It's gonna have a number. The higher the number, the better it is at blocking out sound. So basically how it works is this. Let's say the sound you're trying to attenuate is 100 decibels. This earplug has uh, an NRR of 30 decibels. So basically you're gonna take the sound you're trying to attenuate and you're going to subtract the, uh, from that number, the NRR rating. So 100 decibel sound level versus NRR of 30, you're basically looking at 70 decibels then at your ear. Um, conversely, if it's a lower number, it attenuates less. So let's say these were 25 NRR, incoming sound is 100, 100 minus 25, 75 decibels. So how much do you need as far as NRR? I think a good basic rule, gonna be around 25 decibels for your NRR. That's gonna be great for rimfire. Rimfire isn't that loud anyway. It's gonna be good for nine millimeter. Most of your common handgun rounds. Now, if you decide to be a hand cannon enthusiast, like I am, you're gonna to wanna to move up into the 30s, <laughs> okay? Just trust me on that. Those hand cannons, whew. Especially the 357 Magnum. Um, 357 Magnum is not the loudest. 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum is definitely louder, but for some reason, 357 Magnum I find to be especially ear splitting. I don't know what it is about that round. Maybe it's just me, but I don't know. It, it's like it has more of those higher frequencies associated with its report. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble. Sorry on that tangent. So remember, look for the NRR. The higher the number, the better. Good baseline starting level, 25 decibels for your NRR. All right, let's take a look. Oh, sorry, one more thing. If you're going to be shooting indoors, uh, a big suggestion from many is that you double up, meaning you put earplugs in your ears and then you put earmuffs on top of that. Why? Um, sounds hit you harder indoors, okay? Because indoors, you've got the walls. Most shooting ranges will not have the sound deadening foam. So you got all those gunshots just bouncing around before the sound energy finally dissipates. A good way to test this yourself, just take your cell phone, play your favorite bit of music, Okay, crank it up all the way. Crank the volume up all the way. Take it outside, listen to it outside. And then take it inside, put yourself, let's say, in your bathroom, play the same song at the same sound level, and notice how, even though you're playing it at the, at the same sound level, playing that song inside in a very enclosed space suddenly is a lot louder than playing it outside in a very open space. Because in an open area, the sound is uh, able to disperse much better, so it's the sound is going away from you as the energy is dissipating, whereas indoors, <laughs> you're getting hit by that sound over and over and over again until it finally dissipates. Okay, let's take a look at the different styles. The earmuffs are very prevalent. Uh, if you go to a shooting range that has a rental display where you can rent guns, usually, the, usually they, they will have rental equipment. Uh, usually when you rent your gun, they give you ear protection and eye protection uh, along with it. But anyway, these are the most common. 
because with shooting ranges that let, that let you rent these out, they're, they're easy to clean. Well, they're, they're supposed to be cleaning them anyway. You know, after you use them, you turn them in, it's easy for them to clean and sanitize them. These come in all sorts of ratings. Um, usually, not always, but usually the thicker the ear cups, uh, the higher the noise reduction rating. So I use these for quite a bit. Um, I think these have like a 34 rating, so pretty good. Now, one thing you'll notice is because of the thickness of the ear cups, uh, these can be a problem if you're shooting long guns. Any gun that you have to shoulder, like a rifle or a shotgun, these can get in the way of your cheek weld. But they do sell the so-called slimline ones where either they're slimmer or they have a cutaway, like on these Colts. Um, now, regardless of which style you go with, whether you go with the full cup or the cutaways, again, look for the NRR. What kind of uh, noise reduction are you getting here? Another issue with these, um, you have to understand that NRR, they come up with, those are like ideal conditions. There will be some real world conditions that can uh, impact and lessen the effect of, uh, lessen the effectiveness of, the, of your ear pro. And on these earmuffs, that's gonna be in the form of the gel here. See this cushioning stuff? This is what's going to provide the seal between your ear and the incoming noise. And not all of these uh, earmuffs are made the same. Some of these have, uh, usually the stiffer ones, okay, you're gonna have to maybe warm them up with your hand or something so they can flex a bit more and, and form a better seal around your ear. Also your head shape, you know, if you got a weird shaped head, you know, like me, <laughs> maybe, maybe these, uh, these cups won't form that perfect seal. So there's one thing to consider. Um, these, I spent a little bit more money. It wasn't a whole lot, but I think these were 30 bucks, but I've had these for quite a while. And uh, as you can see, the gel looks, uh, still looks pretty good. Well, I don't know if it's gel, it's probably just foam. But what, 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 regardless of what they're using here, both the, uh, the material and the, the covering, they've held up pretty well. Some of the cheaper ones, especially if you have you know, corrosive sweat, these will start to t uh, fall apart basically. So spend a little bit of the extra money. Now I did have to move away from these unfortunately uh, because I, I really like these right here. These have real good uh, sound deadening. But I had to move away from these because I'm one of those people that suffers from migraines. And after, you know, the key to these is they, they press against your ear to really seal uh, or, or to make that seal. And after, let's say, about 15 to 20 minutes of these things squeezing <laughs> on my head, uh, yeah, I end up with a headache. Usually a trip to the range meant I went home and... You know, I was taking Tylenol or something to, uh, to get rid of the, uh, the headache. And you don't really want to be taking, you know, headache medication on a frequent basis. So I had to move away from these and find something else uh, that, that would be almost as good. And that's when I went to the earplugs. So at first, because I, I didn't start off as a hand cannon enthusiast, um, and I shoot mostly outdoors, so I went with these. I think these are Peltor brand. These are pretty nice. They're made out of silicone. They're nice and soft. They're washable. I think these have a, if I remember correctly, these have an NRR of I think 26 dB. So great for rim fire, pretty good for nine millimeter. Now, when I went to the hand cannons, when I discovered the world of revolvers and all that magnum goodness, yeah, all of a sudden these mm, weren't quite cutting it. So I moved on to these ones. All right, pretty good rating, 30. That's a nice rating right there. Now, these are very popular because these are really cheap. You can get a whole bunch of them. I forgot what, how much these were. I think, I think these were like 20. And I think these were like 13 to $15. So not a whole lot of money. You get a whole, a whole bunch of these. These are disposable. 
you can wash them. You might be able to get, you know, maybe two or three out of them, before, two or three uses before you got to throw them away. Don't try to keep them too long, okay, because they are disposable. So, you know, after a while they get dirty and sometimes washing just can't make them clean anymore. You don't want to shove dirty things in your, in your ear, okay? Just be okay with the fact that maybe three uses and then you got to throw them away. Uh, one downside to these is they're rather inconvenient. So do not just mash these in your ear. Don't do that. You will not get any hearing protection at all. <laughs> what you got to do is you got to roll them up. I know they say to use your fingers. I'm impatient. I just do this. <laughs> all right. As long as there, there aren't any major creases, as long as they're not wrinkled up too badly, you'll be okay. Roll them up. That's right. Roll your own till they're nice and thin, and then you stick them in your ear. Um, I have fairly straight ear canals, so mine go in, or these go into my ear rather easily. If you're having trouble, try pulling down on your earlobe as you insert these in to help straighten out your ear canal. And then, as you saw, these will slowly expand to feel your uh, to to feel to fill your ear canal. Now you're gonna want to place your finger. Okay, on these and have them stay in your ear so that they don't fall out while uh, they're expanding. Okay, once they're fully expanded, they will fill up your ear canal and these do a good job. But again, they're rather inconvenient because you got to roll them up first and it takes about 30 seconds or so for them to expand. So, you know, a lot of the outdoor range I go to, a lot of times there's not a whole lot of people there. It's just me and a buddy. So sometimes, you know, we'll, we'll talk to each other, of course, and then, you know, you want to pull out your ear pro because no one else is shooting, right? If it's just you and your buddy, you want to talk for a little bit. But then when it's time to put them back in, yeah, you got to go through the whole process of rolling them up, you know, sticking them in, putting your finger to hold them in place and wait 30 seconds. Okay, so I got a little tired of doing that, so I went and got these. Oh, by the way, these Paltors, that's what's cool about these. They got this little plastic stem. You just hold on to these and basically just shove them in your ear with a twisting motion. So these are very easy to uh, put in and get back out. Anyway, the ones I currently use are these. These are called the, the skull screws. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of gimmicky and looks kind of gimmicky, but look at that. The, the stem that you hold on to. Yeah, it looks like a little screw. So that you screw them into your ear like you're Frankenstein's monster or something. Well, actually, those screws were, what, in his neck, typically? But anyway, you sort of see where, what they're going for. Um, as gimmicky as these sound, these work incredibly well. Um, I've seen two different NRR ratings on the skull screws. I've seen them as low as 30 and as high as 32. So when shooting my hand cannons outside, these actually work really well. And the, the little stem you use to screw them into your ear and then screw them back out, this is very, very convenient. So when I got to talk to my buddy, yeah, I just easily unscrew it from my ear. And then when it's time to shoot again, yeah, screw them back in. But if you're going to a range that's fairly busy and you're going to have your ear pro in all the time, you know, nothing wrong with these. You know, that initial setup, you only have to do once if you're going to leave them in all the time. And again, uh, get a whole bunch of them for like not a whole lot of money. These are going to be a little bit more. These are going to be like, I don't know, some, somewhere around 75 cents to a dollar per pair. That's just a rough estimate. Unfortunately, I've, I've never seen these sold in just like small pairs. You got to buy like the bulk box. I've seen these on eBay in, you know, in packs of like ones and twos and tens. The problem I have with that is um, eBay does not have a good track record of filtering out the fakes. You know, those might be fakes. There's a lot of counterfeiting going on, folks. A lot of knockoffs floating around. Um, and I don't want to trust my ears to possible knockoffs. So I got to go through Amazon. All right, I'm not some Amazon shill, but I'm just saying Amazon has better 
knockoff and counterfeit protection uh, than, let's say, eBay, at least in my opinion. If that's changed, hey, fine, go to eBay and, you know, buy these for cheaper. Uh, but those bulk packs will last you quite a while. I bought a bulk pack some time ago. I still have it. I'm still, you know, there's still a lot left because these are washable. These are meant to be disposable. But uh, you can get about, uh, about four or five washings out of these. I think I've got like four washings out of these right now. And they still look pretty good. They're starting to get a little frayed here. So, yeah, this will probably be the... My next outing with these will probably be the last, but you know, five, five or so. Hell, I'm happy with four. <laughs> you know, four uses out of these. So there you go, a general overview of good basic hearing protection. So just to recap, two different styles: earmuffs versus the ear plugs. Um, with the earmuffs, uh, pay attention to the quality of the ear cup seal. The better the ear cup seal, the more comfortable it will be for you to wear. Um, and also, uh, the, the more effective that NRR rating really is going to be. Because if, the, if these don't seal up well, you're not getting the full NRR. You're just not. Oh, also another problem with these. If you wear glasses, obviously your glasses are going to go right here. And your glasses are going to be a bit of an an, an can't talk right now. They're going to be a bit of an impediment for this sealing up uh, against your ear because your glasses are in the way. Or if you have, you know, thin, thin arms on your glasses, obviously these, these are going to press on them and then press into your face. <laughs> and after a while, eh, that, that might be a little painful. They do sell ones with a little ridge, a little cutaway for your where the arms of your glasses go, but you're gonna, you're gonna have to look for those. Um, most of them will not have that little little ridge cutaway for your glasses. So just something to think about. And these are especially problematic for people who wear uh, prescription glasses. Then you wear those OTGs on top of that. You, that that's a lot of bulk around your head, <laughs> and that's going to interfere. Uh, with providing a good seal. OTG means over the glasses. So basically they're uh, eye protection over your prescription glasses. So you've got two, uh, two, uh, two arms, two sets of arms around your head that these have to try and seal up on. So the other styles, the earplugs, these go in your ear. Um, if you get the silicone ones, you can get a lot of washings out of them. These, you know, as long as you're gentle when, when washing them, these will, these really won't rip and tear that easily. Uh, and again, pay attention to the NRR. The higher the rating, the better. Good baseline standard, 25 dB, great for rim fire, pretty good for nine millimeter. But if you're gonna go into magnums, gonna get into that hand cannon stuff, yeah, get at least 30. For your NRR and if you're shooting indoors double up get some ear plugs and put your put your earmuffs on top of those alrighty hopefully this was informative or at the very least somewhat entertaining thanks for watching catch you all next time